Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Thursday, October 12th at 9.41 p.m. Mountain Time. Doing a Grand Solar Minimum update, what you're looking at is currently erupting volcanoes. They don't include Shinomake, which is currently erupting in Japan here. Uh, I did a tally. There are 37 erupting volcanoes on this map and we'll be keeping track of them moving forward as they increase. As the Pacific Rim wakes up here, we're going to get more erupting volcanoes in this area, and this map will change uh, as the months progress. So there's a heads up that I'll be keeping track of volcanoes as we go. So now let's get into the update. We have Northern Sumatra's Mount Cinnabon re-erupting on Thursday, spewing ash two kilometers in the air. There's a threat of cold lava flood, and it's looming. I'll leave you links to all these articles. There are no casualties in this eruption, thankfully, because it's been on high alert for a very long time. It's been erupting for months, and there's a three to seven kilometer stay away zone, and people are heeding that because this thing is uh, erupting quite violently, as you can see in this picture which is from yesterday's eruption. So I'll leave you links to that. There's also another article here uh, on Cinnabon. Some great photos. I'll leave you links to that. Cinnabon is one of Indonesia's 129 active volcanoes and has been on top alert since July 2015, which is alert five, which is stay away or die. There's also an interesting article here on the five takeaways from Mount Sinabung and Agung's volcanic phenomena. Now, Ambe is also erupting currently today. I just take a look at it. So all these are, uh, so we're just waiting on Agung to go, and that will be a violent eruption. So let's talk about the sun, geomagnetic storm that we had been in for the last 24 hours. The sun has been spotless in, and the coronal hole arrived yesterday. Here, the, the stream from this coronal hull arrived, and what did it, it did was it created a geomagnetic storm. Now you can see the activity on the sun as far as watts per meter squared is dead. It's in the A range, very low. That's what we would expect in solar minimum. Uh, but because of our weakening magnetosphere, these solar wind streams are affecting us more and more. And you can see here it come up in one, two, three pulses. And that resulted in massive geomagnetic storm here on Earth. Uh, and th this comes in oscillating waves. So think about it as whoa, 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 whoa. And what that did and that ramping up of speed, it caused problems and chaos throughout the globe. If you watch Suspicious Observer's report today, he covered it all. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link to it in the description. And there were outages across the globe, including social media and Facebook. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do if we can't Facebook? So that's just a heads up. This is ending, and there will be no geomagnetic storm moving forward until we get some, another coronal hole stream or we get some X flares coming off the sun. So this is going to drop back down to the ground over the next 24 hours. And you can see here we've come out of electron uh, flux. We were in... Uh, radiation storm levels all the way down here to 10 to the minus 1 the other night. Not good for human health cases, certain human health cases. So this is the heads up on there and the space weather we had been receiving over the last 48 hours and all of the cockamamie things in the news that are not explained because of this geomagnetic storm. They don't tell you that's what it's from. They Nobody knows what it's from. It's amazing. So here's just some um, moving forward. We're going to be talking about uh, the permaculture farm that we have here and the experimental greenhouses we're growing to be uh, sustainable and to survive and thrive into the ongoing catastrophe, which we're all experiencing. And this is one guy, my neighbor, right up the road here in Basalt, how over the past 20 years, he has been able to grow bananas and figs at uh, 7,500 feet. He has a food forest, and it's all sustainable. Similar to what we're doing using climate batteries, uh, he uses a simple solar system to force hot air under the ground to create climate batteries and uses its greenhouses to extend growing seasons. He's in zone six. We're a little bit more severe here at 5A, uh, but it can be done anywhere on the globe, folks. So you'll get a link to this article, and it's pretty awesome to see what this uh, guy has done in the middle of nowhere. A little heads up on infectious diseases. 
the hantavirus has spread from rats to humans. There are 12 cases now in North America. Why is this important to the grand solar minimum? Because rodents are going to be prolific in the time of chaos and famine. We have to deal with this. And the hantavirus is not supposed to be in humans. And according to this, there are 12 cases where this particular type uh, called the soul virus, which is very toxic, has jumped over to humans in 12 cases. I'm sorry, there's 17 confirmed cases of this in people now. So that's a heads up moving forward. Let's talk about Ophelia. They're claiming that it's the 10th consecutive Atlantic hurricane. Tying the all-time record set in 1878. Oh my God, it must be because of global warming, don't you think? I don't think so. I'll leave you links to the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Um, and you could see here how warm the Atlantic Ocean was back when this record was set. And if you come up to today, we're in that same area up here. This doesn't go up to 2017, but the Atlantic is quite warm now. And it's equivalent to this period back when the record was set. So it has nothing to do with global warming and everything to do with the temperature of the Atlantic Ocean which is where these are these hurricanes are forming. So if you have any questions or want to know more about that, I have videos on the topic. Go check it out, the AMO, the Atlantic Multi-Decadal Oscillation, and you can see, get more information on why this is happening in the same exact scenario that's set up now, set up in 1890 or 1878. Uh, there's been an earthquake detected in North Korea. So apparently they're testing a weapon. It's not a substantial one. It's right here. It only popped off at 2.7. See if I can get a, some info on there. 2.9, Sujimang, North Korea, 23 kilometers northeast of Sunjin Bingangam, North Korea. Right there, 2.9. That's a small nuke. So they're doing testing. Another thing we're going to touch on tonight is the swarms here in Soda Springs. So I'll leave you links to this nuclear test detected. I'm sure Dabu7 did a video on that, so you can go check that out. Uh, let's just answer this question. <laughs> so millions are participating in a shakeout earthquake drill. Hmm. That's right at the New Madrid Fault, folks. This is the Missourian, and a good thing, because this is going to fault. We have evidence, a very high confidence in the work of John Casey, um, that this fault is probably going to trip during this grand minimum. And based on the time frame in the 206 or 7-year cycle, it would either be this winter or next winter that this earthquake ha happens based on the cycle, not based on any other evidence. We do have evidence that there are increasing earthquakes happening in the New Madrid area, the Mississippi River has drained, and other phenomena that are leading us to believe that something interesting is happening in the New Madrid area. So luckily, millions are going to participate in this shakeout earthquake drill, and it's going to save thousands of lives. This drill will save thousands of lives, folks. <laughs> and I'm holding my tongue there. So what we're loading here is that the earthquake swarm is continuing to shake in East Idaho. And that's not loading, so I'm going to give that a minute. And let's get back to the earthquake map. So what we're going to be doing ongoing now, moving forward, is updating this map daily at least two or three times a week. Uh, I haven't really determined how we're going to do it. I'm going to double check the information on today's data because they're not including that Shinomoke, which just erupted two days ago now in Japan. And I had problems uploading the video last night. It took me five hours to upload that video because it – Portions of the footage I had were blocked worldwide. So the Japanese authorities are preventing you from seeing the eruption, and it's also not being shown here on the map, which is at Volcano Discovery, which is a live resource. Why they're not allowing to show an actual volcano that's erupting is beyond me. Because we all know it's erupting. I've seen hundreds of uh, videos on the actual eruption. In fact, I uploaded it to... Last night's video, but it was 
blocked worldwide. A couple of you, 14 of you actually got to see some of the footage maybe. Tell me if you actually saw the footage I had up there and how uh, horrible it was and why the world couldn't see it. Let's go to the latest earthquake map again. There's the nuclear test up here in North Korea. And here, uh, let's go come in on North Korea. I copied the Mount Hood um, earthquake swarm. There seems to be a new swarm happening up here in Cascadia. Let's go to the satellite. It's right next to a volcano. There's several volcanoes out here. And there's a couple of uh, perturbations in the earth right there. So that's probably magma moving underneath because of that bubble muon hypothesis that wakens up these volcanoes here on the Pacific Rim. So it's just a heads up there. But let's come over here to the Soda Springs area in Idaho where there have been hundreds of eruptions. Let's see if this came back up. Here it is. The earthquake swarm continues to shake. So take a look at this map, folks. This is here in Soda Springs. There's Bear Lake in Caribou County. There's Soda Springs right here. And look at this number of earthquakes happening here. It's really worrying people for a number of reasons because this is supposed to be aftershocks um, from a 5.0 that happened several months ago. But the aftershocks are increasing. And when you have aftershocks increasing, they no longer become aftershocks, but what they become is foreshocks, which is evidence of a major quake about to happen in Soda Springs. Now, that would be a very, very rare thing because not many of them happen. And if you read this article, it's going to infer that there is a slight chance of a large earthquake happening based on this data. And what they mean on a large earthquake is they mean up to a magnitude 7.0 happening in the near future, simply because of the number of total earthquakes in the recent history, which is not indicative of aftershocks, but of building a building major movement and foreshocks. So that's where they are on this right now. We'll have to keep a watch on it. If these uh, earthquake swarms continue to be in, this is how many earthquakes happened between October 5th and 11th. This is just in the last week. This is a shit ton of earthquakes. Even though they're tiny, something is up in this area. And now Yellowstone is hundreds of miles to the north, so we don't have to worry about that. But if this has something to do with subsurface sh deep shift in magma in this whole area, we could really be in for a show here in this Grand Solar Minimum, folks, which is why I want to uh, cover it all for posterity. Hopefully it'll be up somewhere in the cloud or we'll be able to keep it in some uh, files. So I hope you got something out of the video tonight. Again, we're going to be keeping a count on currently erupting volcanoes, and I'll start to make a graph and keep the data down so we have, you know, actual quantitative analysis of the increase in volcanic activity worldwide moving forward so that we're not just speculating it's happening, so we're actually looking at the numbers and watching how it increases through time. I'm going to work on that graph tonight. We'll, we'll share it in the next video coming up here, and I'll show you how we're going to do this moving forward so we can actually see how the volcanism is lighting up, and maybe we can even determine if it's like moving around in some particular fashion so we can have maybe a little heads up on what could be lighting up next in the in the volcanic zones across the country. So just as we move forward on this, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe now. And as far as all the uh, negative comments on my, the comment I made about Dutch Synths, guys, if you just do a quick Google search on him, research what the guy's history is as a blogger and what his purpose was. Okay, he's given a he's a great resource as far as telling you what's happening on the globe as far as earthquakes. But just look into the history of the guy. I'll tell you what, and you probably won't think that he's going to protect your life. He's looking for money. We don't ask for money on this channel. We don't want money. We just need enough money to pay for our electric bill here. So we don't have any donation sites. We're not going to have any fun drives. We just want you to watch the videos and learn something and share this information with other like-minded people so that they can get the truth out. Because the mass media is brainwashing you. Be safe, everyone.